Set in the year 1950, the story is about a utopian town called Victory. This small town is surrounded by desert on all sides. Several hundred residents live here, all of whom are extremely wealthy and live a posh lifestyle. All male residents living in the town are taking part in a mysterious project. The Victory headquarters is situated at the top of a mountain in the middle of the desert. However, women are strictly forbidden to venture into the desert. Legend says that if one ends up there, they will never return the same. The women are expected to just be concerned with their own houses and their lives, and to not question what their husbands do for a living. They are only told that their husbands are involved in the development of progressive material. While the husbands spend all of their time at the Victory Project headquarters, the wives get to spend their time enjoying the beauty, luxury, and debauchery of their community. The founder of this whole place and project is Frank. Everyone regards him as a hero. The whole town is regularly blasted with Frank's inspiring speeches through speakers, where he promises to create something great. One day, the neighborhood is organizing a house party. The attendees include our protagonist Alice and her husband Jack, among other neighbors who all seem to be really close to one another. While the men keep talking about how they are all really lucky to be part of the Victory Project, all the women seem to indulge in internal gossip or playing drinking games. The following morning, we see Alice cook breakfast for Jack as he gets ready and heads out for work at the exact same time as the other men. All of them get into their respective cars as the wives bid them goodbye. The wives then engage in in a sort of routine that includes cleaning every speck of dust in the house and cooking a three-course lavish meal for their husbands. Occasionally, they enjoy themselves by gathering at the community house or by sharpening their ballet skills under the guidance of Shelley. She is a sort of rigid woman who seems to be hell-bent on making sure that these women follow the rules and regulations set by her husband and founder of this utopia, Frank. Everything seems perfect in this utopian town, but the controlled bubble of this utopia gets its first trigger when Frank organizes a party to to welcome the newest members of the community, Bill and Violet. Everyone is present there, and like always, all the men and women seem to be in complete awe of what Frank is doing with Victory Town. However, before he can proceed any further, a woman named Margaret steps forward. She looks visibly anxious and disturbed, but still finds the courage to ask the question that all of them have been dreading to ask. What are we doing here? This shocks all the attendees, including Margaret's husband, as no one has ever questioned Frank before. Nonetheless, Frank delivers yet another inspiring speech and wows the audience, prompting everyone to forget about Margaret. After the speech, Alice goes looking for her husband Jack, but she unexpectedly witnesses Margaret's husband trying to force feed her some pills that the town physician Dr. Collins has prescribed her. However, everyone knows that Margaret is ill, so she doesn't pay much attention and leaves. The next day, as all the women, including Alice, are chatting in the community center. The topic of Margaret is again brought up. The chatterbox of the group, Bunny, reveals that Margaret became mentally ill because she failed to follow the one rule set by Frank, to not venture into the desert. Through flashbacks, we are shown that Margaret lost her son when she was in the desert, and that trauma has set her into a complete state of disfigurement. Alice, who is listening to all of this, appears to be worried. That night, Alice has nightmares where she witnesses unusual ballet dancers in black and white. The next day, another weird thing happens. As Alice is preparing a meal, she finds that the eggs are completely empty in the inside. Hence, after Jack leaves for work, she takes a lorry ride to clear her mind. All the women get off at the mall, but Alice decides to continue going. However, when she's about to reach the end of the line, she witnesses a red plane losing its balance over the desert skyline. Panicked, Alice asks the lorry driver to take her to the crash site, but the latter completely freezes and tells her that he's not allowed to. This is because the plane has crashed in the middle of the forbidden desert, but in spite of all the warnings, Alice decides to go on her own, as she is adamant on saving the survivors. After walking for a while, she eventually reaches the desert, which is barren and empty as expected. Alice does not find the plane or any wreckage, but what she finds is a large mountain, which leads her to a building. This building is none other than the Victory Town headquarters itself, the place where all the husbands apparently go to work. Trying to get help, Alice aligns her face to the building's glass opening, and the next thing we know, she is back at home, waking up from a nightmare that had similar images to her previous hallucination. Alice is obviously shocked and confused by the incident, but she decides to hide it from Jack. Unfortunately, over the course of the next few days, her waking nightmares keep getting worse. Most of the time, she keeps hallucinating about the ballet dancers, and in one instance, she feels like she's being crushed by the walls of her own house. But one day, 
everything changes. She witnesses a depressed Margaret committing the unthinkable. Alice rushes to save her, but a bunch of men dressed in red suddenly appear and drag her away. That night, she explains the entire incident to her husband Jack, but surprisingly, he reveals that Margaret is alive and well. She never committed the unthinkable and had just slipped in the bathroom. Alice, who's in complete disbelief, doesn't listen to him and tries to look for answers, but Jack calms her down and asks her to take some rest. Unfortunately for Alice, her hallucinations continue getting worse, so the town physician Dr. Dr. Collins is summoned to their house one day. He conducts some tests on her and prescribes her some pills, claiming that she is just stressed out. However, Alice asserts that she is fine and continues asking about Margaret. When she starts becoming rude, Dr. Collins reveals that Margaret is fine, but her husband was fired from his job because of her actions, and now they have been moved from the town. Hearing this, Alice keeps silent for Jack's sake. Just then, she notices a file in Dr. Collins' suitcase that has Margaret's name on it. Alice covertly steals it while the doctor is away and later goes through it. To her dismay, most of it has been blacked out. The only thing she can find is details about Margaret's deteriorating mental health. The next day, Jack approaches her and gives her a dress. He asks her to wear it immediately, as the head of the town, Frank, has invited them to a special event. Despite not feeling 100%, Alice obliges, as she has no other choice. At the event, however, she again begins hallucinating and goes into a mental breakdown. Having had enough, she pleads with her husband to return home, but just then, Frank calls him on stage, seemingly to make an announcement. As Alice watches on nervously, Frank praises Jack as the ideal employee and promotes him to the executive position. The crowd erupts in cheers, and Jack starts screaming with joy, but a confused and distraught Alice rushes to the bathroom, where she breaks down in tears. On stage, Frank asks Jack to dance, because Harry Styles can't act, so this is all he's good for. And like a puppet, he obliges. It almost feels like it's a direct metaphor for how all the strings in Victory Town are attached to Frank's hands, and he is just puppeteering them all through. Meanwhile, the chatterbox bunny approaches Alice in the bathroom, but instead of trying to help her, she tries to put some sense into her. She tells Alice to stop being hysterical and to support her husband on this big night. The following day, Jack organizes a promotion party at his place, and Alice is tasked with the cooking. She seems surprisingly calm for a person who was disoriented just the other day. However, it all appears to be part of her mastermind plan. Soon, all the residents of the neighborhood arrive, along with special guest Frank and his wife, Shelly. After a while, as Alice is in the kitchen, Frank approaches her and says, I'm sorry Bunny didn't believe you. He then commends Alice on her presence of mind and challenges her to find out more about the place. This finally confirms that Alice is not crazy and whatever she is hallucinating has something to do with this weird town. Hence, at dinner, a fed up Alice decides to take center stage. She confronts all the men about the town's need for perfection and wonders why the women cannot venture into the desert. As Jack and the others listen in disbelief, Alice draws out a few peculiar similarities between how all of them landed in Victory Town and how their life before it was a complete blur. Strangely, all the residents are either from Baltimore or from Chicago. All of the couples met at the same train station in the same manner, and all of them had their honeymoons in the same venue. Alice continues that all the food products in Victory Town, ranging from vegetables to packaged food, are manufactured under the name of Frank. But despite all this, no one bats an eye that something is clearly wrong. Unfortunately, her claims are proven correct, as all the other diners simply think that whatever she is saying is a hysterical outburst. When everyone leaves, Alice, having shattered Jack's reputation, tells him that there's something really wrong with Victory Town and that they should leave immediately. And despite being completely embarrassed in front of the others, Jack agrees to whatever Alice says, claiming that he will love her no matter what. Unfortunately, just as they are about to leave in their car, Jack starts apologizing profusely. He cannot go through with it. Alice slowly comes to terms with his betrayal, but before she can react, the same men in red from earlier arrive at the scene and forcefully take Alice away. Next, we see her receiving shock therapy. The reasons for this are not disclosed just yet, but these electroshocks are closely cut with the actual truth of who she is. We get a rundown of Alice and her husband Jack living in a modest apartment. It is the 21st century and not the 1950s. Alice appears to be a nurse who works late night shifts at the hospital because Jack has recently lost his job. One night, she returns exhausted after a 30-hour shift in which she had to oversee three separate surgeries. Jack tries to be romantic with her, but Alice is too tired for it. Plus, he looks greasy. This shows that the couple is slowly drifting apart because of Alice's hectic work schedule. Hence, being jobless and lonely, Jack blindly starts following the preaching videos of a personality named Frank. Frank is someone who has apparently developed a technology that allows couples to live in an extremely evolved virtual reality, a simulation of a 1950s utopia that screams perfection.
attention from the get-go. One night, Jack, who has lost all sense of control due to his fragile male ego, decides to reach out to Frank. He then learns of the Victory Project and immediately decides he wants to be a part of it. Not only that, he forces Alice into the experiments. For a brief second, we see her force plugged into the simulation's ground control, which turns out to be their bed in the real world. Soon, Jack sleeps beside her, and he too enters the world of the simulation. Following this, we are shown a montage that gives us more details about the simulation. We get to know that the entire thing doesn't have Alice's consent. It is something that Jack decides for both of them, so as to gain some kind of control over what his wife does. In the simulation, Jack chooses to have a British identity, since he's very bad at American accents. And since there's no other way to it, Alice's entire memory is wiped before she enters Victory as a citizen. We also learn later that all the men in Victory Town have voluntarily joined in to be a member, while their partners, the women, have been held captive against their will and have been uploaded into the simulation. All the kids that are visible in the town are simply NPCs. They are not real. They have been designed for the parents who couldn't have children in their real lives. After the montage ends, we see Alice, completely wiped from her recent plans to escape, returning back to her idyllic home. However, this time, the simulation and the lie don't seem to carry on for too long, as she gets triggered into reality again, as soon as she recognizes the song that Jack is humming. It is one of her favorite songs from her real life in the 21st century, which she often used to sing while at work. Now, everything flashes in front of Alice, and she realizes that it was her husband who has been the culprit all along. Caught red-handed, Jack finally comes clean. He reveals that he did everything for their own good, as their life in the 21st century was going downhill. Jack was jobless, and Alice didn't even have time to talk to him properly. Hence, he took the tough decision and enrolled them into the Victory Project, where they have a flawless life with abundant money and respect. Jack further reveals that life for Alice is very simple. All she has to do is make friends and relax, while he has to return back to the real world and collect money to keep the simulation running. Here, it is finally revealed where all the husbands of Victory Town go. They don't work for the development of any progressive material, but they go to Victory Headquarters to exit the simulation and try to earn some money in the real world to give their wives better lives. However, despite hearing all of this, Alice is still hurt that her husband betrayed her. One thing leads to another, and the two get into an argument, which ends with Alice smashing a glass over Jack's head. Sadly, the impact kills him. When out of the house, a bloodied Alice startles everyone and specifically tells them that they are being controlled by a program that Frank has created. All of the residents try to stop her, except Bunny. This is where we come to learn that out of all the women, only Bunny is aware of the truth behind Victory. It turns out that she agreed to sign up for it, because in the real world, her children died. Bunny tells Alice to run away, explaining that if someone dies in the simulation, they will also die in the real world. And now that the men in red are coming for her, Alice has very little time. Hearing this, a frightened Alice immediately gets in her car and drives off to the one place from which she can escape, the Victory Town headquarters. On her way, she is met by Frank's henchmen. The men in red have been tasked to capture Alice, or possibly to kill her, consequently stopping her real-life body from ever waking up. This step is taken because Alice never signed up for the project, and if she wakes up and reports to the authorities about it, Frank's empire will be doomed. Somehow, she evades the thugs and reaches the mountain. However, midway, her car breaks down, so she is forced to flee on foot, while the men in red follow her closely. Elsewhere, as Frank is following the entire development via call, his wife Shelly surprisingly stabs him in the chest and kills him. Before she departs, she simply says, It's my turn now. Bitch. Meanwhile, Alice reaches the top of the mountain, but just when she is about to approach the window of the headquarters, she has one of her visions where she sees Jack asking her to stay in victory and be with him. However, free from control and having developed a conscience of her own, Alice ignores him and eventually touches the glass of the headquarters window. For a second, the screen fades to black, and before the film ends, we briefly hear a woman gasping for air, signifying that Alice has teleported back to the real world. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.